it very difficult for us. So now we stay in hiding. The Indonesian security forces are being reformed, but the legacy of past behaviour will take time to erase. The military posts are well within view, nestling in the valley. And as long as the independence fighters are here, so will the soldiers be. The army's mission, not just to root out the rebels, but also to protect vital business interests. Papua is rich in natural resources. It's home to the world's largest gold and copper mine. There's gas, timber and palm oil. A blessing for some, a curse for others. We believe it's about morality. Because the world is interested in our resources, they won't talk about us. Because of the oil in Sarong, BP in Batuni, and the gold and copper, that's why the world just ignores us and our struggle. Hard to ignore this. Passionate defiance, proud traditions. Clans gather to mark Papua's self-declared Independence Day. Now is the time to get our sovereignty back, he says. In towns and villages, all Papuans must unite. This ceremony is usually conducted in secret. Few outsiders have seen it, let alone filmed it. Since I was a young boy, I've been thinking and dreaming of independence. Independence is our right to be free. We raise our flag. We love our flag. This is a symbol of our nation. There is no more potent image of national aspiration than a flag. It's illegal to raise the morning star. This is a very deliberate, very formal act of defiance. Papua has been granted a degree of autonomy from the central government in Jakarta, but its implementation has been patchy. And for the free Papua movement, anything short of full statehood will never be enough. We raised our flag. No one sees us in the jungle. But one day we know we will be free. Anger at the state displayed in an act now universally understood. The red and white flag of Indonesia first torn and then burned. While the Papuan flag flies free. This is what happens when that act of defiance is moved into a public space. A rally in a district of the provincial capital Jayapura, with the police looking on. Yusak Pukaje, seen here in the stripy shirt, was later arrested and charged with treason. He's currently serving a 10-year jail sentence and is considered by Amnesty International to be a prisoner of conscience. I'm Yusak Pukaje, now I'm staying in the Habibura hospital and uh, I come um, of the uh, Indonesian prison in Abipura. This interview was recorded in secret during a hospital I, visit. I, I, I myself, I was, was pray, pray to God. Yeah, every day I was, to, was pray to God. Yusak's case and others like it are raising the profile of the Papuan cause. This makeshift camp in Jayapura was set up by activists to highlight cases of alleged abuse committed by the police. The authorities tore it down days after these pictures were filmed. Peaceful protests are another crucial part of the broader political struggle. And in terms of garnering international support, they're probably more effective than the armed rebellion. But there's no sign that independence is any closer.
And that's still the dream the rebel fighters are striving for. My ancestors were strong, but now I'm weak. We need the world to help us. Don't talk about autonomy. We need independence. We asked the Indonesian embassy here in London for their comments on the allegations of human rights abuses in the film. They provided us with this statement. We reject the claim made that Indonesia has stolen our land Papua from us because it's not correct from a legal and historical perspective. It's to be noted that Indonesia is the successor state to the colonial power, namely the Dutch East Indies. As such, it inherits the whole territory of its former colonial power, which is the present-day Indonesia, including Papua. We also take note of allegations of torture, rape, killing and human rights abuses in Papua. However, Indonesia is a mature democracy. As such, Indonesia is not a fertile ground for human rights abuses. No one in Indonesia will ever condone human rights violations. Therefore, it's a sad fact if one still judges Indonesia by the old yardsticks. We can confirm that all human rights abuses will be duly investigated in Indonesia and if proven guilty by the court, all abusers of human rights would be punished. No one is immune.